there's a uh, old expression to not be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. But at the same time, you probably should be so heavenly minded you're all earthly good. Because you see, it's not just about thinking that, oh, well, you know, we're Christians, so we only concentrate on things you can't see, or we only do Christian things, you know, we only, <coughs> we only move in a certain sphere of influence. We don't touch other people's lives in a very practical and real way. But the fact of what's inside us is what should change what's on the outside of us. This morning I was confronted with some issues that bother me greatly. And uh, I'd be hmm, less than truthful or honest if I didn't share them, you know, in the Christian world, because it is about Christians. It's about exploitation and the improper use of certain things like children. For instance, children in ministry. There's a popular theme out now about making children into idols like American Idol and, you know, the greatest singing sensation, you know, come along. Oh, look at that little child. They sing like an adult. They're a child. They're not an adult. I know for myself when I was in choir, you know, it was one of my greatest experiences. I, I enjoyed it at school. I was a first soprano of all things. <laughs> and I got solo parts. I got to stand in front of a huge choir behind me and sing the solo, you know, and it was just wonderful. I had this great feeling and this great exultation. But nowadays, as opposed to choir in elementary school or in church, I never went to church, but nowadays, unfortunately, there's this exploitation of making children into pastors and teachers and elders and deacons and into singers and gospel musicians and doing these things that the only way to explain them and to really put them into their proper place is to call it what it is, exploitation. It's becoming like the world and its ways. You know, there's a old, uh, or there's a popular news story out about Jen, I can't even think of her name, Benet, who was a child beauty queen that was supposedly they were taking children and mocking them up to become lo looking like adults with singing talent, dancing, makeup, and all kinds of things that no Christian in their right mind would have thought of years ago. But now, all of a sudden, it's the rage. You know, let's, let's make our children look like adults. Let's live, and the word is called vicariously through. In other words, let's live out our life through our children. So that way we get what we wanted because we can mold them and vicarious living, no matter how you explain it or how you do it, is setting yourself up as God. It is you are God and you have a slave you're making into your own image or into an image that you want to create. And when you take a child and put them in ministry, you're doing the same thing. That child does not have their own faith. That child is following your wishes, your will, and your desire. You are setting yourself up as God. And that is a tempting, very, very, very devious, subtle way that Satan comes into your world and invades your good intentions, which is to want everything for your child to be all that they can be, and making them into what? To be worshipped by who? To be admired by how many? Sadly, the tragedy is you don't even see it coming because you think you're doing the right thing for your child. But gradually you get caught up into the admiration of your child. You get caught up into, oh, the applause, the videos, it went viral. Oh, we've got a contract to sign for them. Oh, we are now the stage mom. Everybody loves Shirley Temple. Everybody wants to be a movie star. Everybody wants to be humble and meek, behind the scenes, not seen by men, to be not observed, but to serve, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. I don't think training a child in the way that they should go is to teach them to seek the applause of men. 
and the gods of men, but rather to deny yourself, take up your cross, means something opposite than putting children in ministry, whether it be singing, whether it be in preaching, whether it be in teaching, or any of those things. That's not what a child is meant to be. No matter how you look at it, it's an abomination unto the Lord. Children were never meant to lead. They were meant to be trained up. They were meant to be taught. And Jesus himself was subservient. Jesus was submissive. Jesus obeyed his parents. I think that somehow the world has really gotten way into Christianity. And now even God's going to judge me because it is, frankly, the worst form of exploitation I could ever imagine than to see children videos singing worship to God and being used by Christians to promote Jesus. It just isn't meant to be. I'm sorry, it's wrong in every way, shape, and form that people are using it because they are abusing it. <clears throat> Loving actions speak clearly. Living as becomes you with complete lowliness of mind and humility and meekness and unselfish gentleness and mildness with patience bearing with one another and making allowance because you love one another. Ephesians 4.2 It is good for the unsaved members of your family to see you studying the Bible, going to church and bearing the fruit of the Spirit. But your family may be more receptive to the gospel as you minister to their needs. Ministering to them may require giving up a prayer meeting to do things with them, such as going fishing or shopping with your spouse or helping your son work on his car or taking your daughter out for lunch. The Bible says that the natural man does not understand the spiritual man. See 1 Corinthians 2.14. So spiritual talk doesn't always make sense to the unsaved people. The loving actions speak clearly to them. Walk in love's anointing today and be kind, joyful, peaceful, and stable and let God love others through you. <clears throat> when I think of how much God loves me and how much <clears throat> I see the world and its ways invading the family and tearing it apart and then turning men into boys and women into girls and then children into adults, I see the opposite of what God intended for the family to be. I see people dressing down and talking down when they should be elevating themselves to become righteous, godly men and women of God, rather than you went through a divorce and now you act like what? You dress like what? You're trying to do what? Or men of God who sadly think that rapping and you know, becoming more dressed down and ungodly in their speech is somehow godly in their speech. Or like even in ministry now, you know, you've got somebody who's once in the world now, oh, well, now we love them because whosoever cometh unto the Lord, you know, shall be saved. And so now we've got this great, I want to be like the whosoever's because I'd rather, you know, go ahead and get all tattooed up and I'd rather get all freaked out looking. So that way I've got more of an effect in the ministry because I wasn't coming from that environment, but now I want to look like them. I want to talk like them. I want to be like them. I'm sorry. The tragedy is I accept every brother and sister in Christ of what they came out of. But you came out of it. You're moving towards godliness and righteousness and holiness. You're becoming a new creation, a new creature in Christ, not imitating the old man and his ways. There is such a thing as a, a dry sinner who says, oh, I've been forgiven of sin and I, I put away the old things and the old man. But then he takes the old ways and the old man and puts it into Christianity and brings his sin with them into his faithful relationship to the Lord. And it's because they're reliving their sin over and over again. It's like the guy who says, oh, I was such a sinner, man. I did drugs, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and man, I was like party and hearty, and I was like all over the place, and I was like, God, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, and then I got saved, and praise the Lord, I'm, I'm thankful. Hello? Are they really glad they gave all that up, or are they reliving it? So you see, there's always a danger of letting the 
world invade your love for the Lord and the world invading your testimony for the Lord and the world coming in because Satan is pushing it on you to become more like the world than to become like Jesus who laid down his life, who loved even to the point of setting aside his moment and making water into wine for the marriage supper, marriage supper <laughs> that he attended in Canaan that his mother asked him to do. I can't imagine more honoring a thing that a man does than when he's old or older and he honors his mother. I think it's a beautiful thing. But I can't think of anything that's more dishonoring to a family than for a child to be more of an adult than the adults are. That's a tragedy. That's something that God never intended. There is an order. There is a place. There is a time that God will call men, women, and children into account. And I hope we find ourselves in the love of God and not the exploitation of one or the other, no matter what side of the coin you find yourself on.